This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Flight. If a three-year-old can drive <laughs> there, park, and walk up to the thing, I That's, think he deserves a free cone. Think of all of the like suburban moms who make like a crock pot pulled pork or something and pour like a whole bottle of Coke in there. Generation Alphas in your skibbity toilets. <sighs> In your Fortnite video <laughs> games. If you tell me north, south, east, or west, I will go the opposite direction every time. IFAF, Idaho Falls Infotainment Talk Show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, Pride Month events happening later this month. What exactly is Gabe Bacon? All You Can Eat Ice Cream, a new Museum of Idaho exhibit. A little Chipotle hack for you Rex Bergians when it comes along. And what's the best state in America? Better be Idaho. It better be. Did you know they're making a movie out of Wicked? I mean, I know I've heard of it. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've heard that's happening. That's I think I heard about it like three years ago, two years ago. I had I no know. idea they were doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't wait. That's one I've never seen. Same. Well, and here's the thing. So back in middle school, actually elementary, as a matter of fact, I had a friend who had the... the uh, Musical Wicked's soundtrack, mm -hmm. and we would listen to it all the time. It was the best. And uh, I tend to not like to hear the soundtrack of a musical before I see it. So that's sort of a newer rule that I've implemented since elementary. <laughs> that's why you don't watch trailers. You don't want any spoilers. I don't. Well, yeah. and that's the thing, especially with musicals, like so much of the song like describes what's going on, you know? So yeah. it's sort of pointless to watch it if you've already heard it. You know, not totally true, but you get what I mean. Anyway, so I've been wanting to see this for forever. Yeah. Because there's not really a good opportunity to see a stage play of Wicked anywhere near here. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, unless I want to spend a few thousand dollars to go to New York and see it, it ain't happening. So, the, so they're making Wicked into a movie. Which I'm so excited for. And I think they should do that with every musical after like five years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Hamilton, Book of Mormon. Right, yeah. Where's our Book of Mormon movie? Beats me, but I'm mad that we don't have it yet. <laughs> and they're making a Moana too. Did you know that? I did know that one. I saw the, the ad for it the other day. And honestly, I'm disappointed. Yeah. I'm so sick of everything being a sequel. So the movies both come out November 27th of this year. Oh, really? Moana 2 and Wicked. Oh, funny. So <laughs> watch out, Barbenheimer. Mm-hmm. Here comes... Woana. Moaned. <laughs> Whoa, wicked. Wait, <laughs> mo wicked. Yeah. Mm, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll come up with something. Moaned. <laughs> moaned. <laughs> she moaned. <laughs> Evil like the fruits of the devil. <laughs> Funny. All right. Well, you notice uh, uh, we're wearing our. Uh, I'm not going to say obligatory. You don't have to wear this stuff, but uh, it's the it's Pride Month, and yeah. we've got our farmers market Pride, Pride shirts, shirts on. Yeah. yeah. I even am wearing my fancy purple jacket. We were watching, uh, was it The Boys or Gen V, where they were talking about different organizations that have, remember, oh, you're like the guy, the consultant guy super locked v. on. Yes. Okay. And you're talking about the ribbons that they use for different like ribbons cancer survivors or and stuff bands. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like obviously red is what? American Red Cross. Yellow was Lance know, Armstrong, Livestrong, right? I know pink is breast cancer. And teal is like uh, for pumpkins at Halloween. But like <sighs> every organization in the world now owns a color. I There's like 20 organizations that claim purple as their color. Right. I, I wouldn't say owns a color, but identifies with a color. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to get gay here in a minute. But first, the follow-ups, <laughs> the comments and follow-ups. Are we... Bringing some folks in? Like, <laughs> you didn't warn me about this. Yeah. <laughs> so hit that like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Every little bit helps. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We we did have our um, old dirty mattress clip blow up on YouTube. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, got a few comments. Mm -hmm. There were definitely a few who I feel didn't listen to the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. And there were definitely some who didn't listen to the whole pod, and you can't blame them for that. You no, know, no, no. they're, they're scrolling. I get it. They're yeah, they're armchair warriors yeah. watching a sixty-second clip yeah. of a five-minute segment we did, <laughs> right? Including right. B Walters nine seven six two on YouTube said the only stains on my mattress were like spilled coffee, and mm -hmm. everyone jumped to a bodily fluids conclusion every time they see it. What's wrong with people? 
Well, B. Walters, whatever. Coffee stains look like diarrhea stains. They sure do. Look like it could have been refried diarrhea. Also, I can't remember the last time I had coffee in bed. Oh, yeah. oh, my mom would do that all the time. Really? Yeah, she'd wake up at like nine uh-huh. and she'd go get a cup of coffee, take it back to her bed. Oh, and she'd that come is out of the bedroom around smart. 10. I kind of get it. She loved to wake up slow. And I may have gotten that from mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and also, I'm not really a coffee person. I'm more of a tea kind of gal because I think coffee tastes like ass. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it tastes worse than ass. <laughs> In the category of smells good. <laughs> Doesn't taste as good as it yeah. smells. I feel like I have to put so much creamer in it that I could completely change the consistency. Yeah, you like a little coffee in your creamer. Right. And that feels like <laughs> such a bastardization of it that I feel so wrong doing it that I'd rather just switch beverages altogether. But this guy <laughs> freaking out that people are freaking out about <laughs> his coffee stain on his bed. First of all, who are you showing your coffee mattress stains to? Right. Uh, and second of all, like... It's the same conclusion they would draw if, say, there was uh, red wine spilled in the middle of the bed. Mm-hmm. You know, it looks like other stuff. Why yeah. do people's imaginations go like that? Because they do. We always assume the worst. Yeah. If we don't know, if we didn't see it happen, unless right. we did it. Right. Well, and especially with stuff like that, like buying a mattress off, well, off of some rando, uh-huh. you know, like, I would want to know exactly what those stains were. Like, you could tell me you spilled lemonade on your bed. But I'm going to assume that you're pitching me yeah. something that isn't totally true. I don't know that your spouse isn't a meth head. Right. Right. What other comment do we get? Um, Fred Toon June 6669 says, I use my carpet shampooer to clean my mattress. It's better than new. Which is stupid smart. Like, There's Fred with that's the solution. so smart. Yeah. Yeah, but I still don't. Like, a mattress is what? Almost a foot thick? No. Mm, yeah. 10 inches, maybe? Yeah, but think of how much of that is There's a air. lot of stuff inside there. Not exactly. I mean, think about think about how much of that is air. You know, especially on a traditional mattress that's mm. like springs in mm. the middle. You know, like Are you there's- thinking box spring? Because there's a difference between a box spring and no, a No, I know. But there's like the pad of the mattress and then like the base of the mattress is like springs and stuff. Like if you cut it open, there's space in there. That's why people used to hide money in their mattresses. Right. Yeah, I know. But- Yeah. Like- um. You can clean the top of a carpet, but right. what's underneath that padding? What kind of black mold is under that yeah, padding not, if you had a flooded basement? You know? You're not totally wrong. Uh. I definitely don't think you are. And you can only get so picky. Right. You know? If you're willing to cough up the dough, absolutely be as picky as you be as picky as you please. And if you're not, Take what you can get. And that was one of the comments on YouTube, too. You guys have obviously never been poor before. (laughs) Uh, Incorrect. Excuse me. I've lived (laughs) off of ramen for a few weeks here and there in my lifetime. I was in radio. Mm -hmm. Broadcasting doesn't pay shit. (laughs) (laughs) You got to become a morning guy and then a program director and then an operations manager. Yeah, you really got to work your way up. If you want to drive that BMW. Yeah. And even then, you get the 3 Series, which is like the um, Honda Civic equivalent (laughs) of a luxury car. Yeah. So we are recognizing Pride Month, June. Yeah, who doesn't like to be an ally? I just love the colors. Oh, yeah. How can you not? I really do. Yeah. You know, one. I used to love rainbows so much that back when I had braces, I would always do rainbows. Uh, And one time, this dumbass put white in it, which, like, that's not how a rainbow goes. It's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Right, And anything outside of that is incorrect. Yeah. After that, I got so (laughs) ridiculously meticulous about how they did my braces. Like, I would have to choose the colors out beforehand and, like, I couldn't just say, hey, do it rainbow, because I didn't trust them. Man, I thought I was, uh, <laughs> I thought I was anal. Yeah. No, I was, I was but an anal kid, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted, here's the thing. I had to wear it on my face for at least a month, my face, you Everybody, know? even dentists, should know Roy G. Biff, though. At, at least. Come on. Come on. But it is the, um, the colors of the rainbow that I love so much, mm-hmm. and uh, some conservatives are offended that the uh, gays... The LGBTQIA plusers. The alphabet mafia. Yeah, have stolen the rainbow from God. Mm-hmm. As if it also didn't belong to, um, I don't know, Judy Garland, Care Bears, 
My Little Pony, Rainbow Bright. Every leprechaun ever. Kermit the Frog, <laughs> leprechauns. <laughs> right? Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, Dead Pets. Yes. Crossing yeah. the Rainbow Bridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was a real bummer to end on. <laughs> I should have I snuck that somewhere in the middle. <laughs> it's all right. Probably, probably better to give it the weight that it deserves. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, we've all had a pet that, uh, that's on the other side. <sighs> I mean, not all of us. Some of us are monsters. Have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> Some of you, I wouldn't trust with a ten foot pole. Honestly, people I who know what's the <laughs> people who've never had and don't have pets freak me out, man. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, okay, think of all of the love and care that goes into you know being the caretaker of a pet. Someone who's never experienced that and who actively doesn't want to kind of freaks me out. I don't know. I'm in that category right now in my life. Yeah, but that's I'm, different because you've had one. Right. I miss the companionship, but I also don't miss, you know, cleaning up bodily fluids. <laughs> sure, sure. I guess what I like knowing is I like knowing that they can empathize with a being outside of themselves. Yeah. You know? and Yeah, makes sense. Not to throw the chick card out there, but as a woman, sometimes men have a hard time empathizing with you. And that is something tricky to sort of navigate if you're dating or anything. And uh, yeah, it's nice when they have a pet because then you know that at least they can see you somewhat outside of themselves. Right. Yeah. Right now, the only living thing in this, uh, in my place, other than me, is a plant. Oh, yeah, which is good. <laughs> you know what? I, I kind of consider plants to be pets too. I just watered it and gave it a pep talk today. <laughs> I think that's really nice. <laughs> yeah. See, and the fact that you're talking to it, I think is great. Like that shows how. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? How invested you are into it. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a living thing in my care. Right. And I take that very seriously. Right. I once got really upset at one of my kids because the goldfish water was like almost not see-through. Oof. Yeah. Oof. I think maybe we should attempt to make a uh, lettuce, bacon, guacamole, tomato Ooh. sandwich. Okay, wait, but we're missing the blue. Blue cheese? Well, but we've got all the LGBTQs in there. Oh, I see what What's you're saying. What's the Q? Quinoa? Quail eggs? Ooh. Quiche? <gasps> <laughs> I don't know. I've got some quail eggs in my fridge. We can make that happen. And then if we <laughs> want to do an LGBTQIA sandwich. Ooh, there we go. Ice cream? <laughs> Who was it that okay. asked? Was Iceberg it? lettuce. Iceberg lettuce. <laughs> Someone asked Ryan Gosling, what's your favorite sandwich? And he said <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> Like such that. a brilliant, such a brilliant yeah. That's, answer, by the way. That would be for dessert. <laughs> right. Ice cream well, sandwich for dessert. Okay, but if we're talking about like your all-time favorite sandwich, like mm-hmm. for some people, if they've got a sweet tooth or if they don't really care for sandwiches, yeah, yeah. it's kind of the move. Now, mine is definitely tuna sandwiches, mm. which I know some people get so grossed out by. I love to make a nice tuna salad. Yeah. Well, specifically, I like a tuna melt. Okay. So like- Oh, yeah. You like it hot. I I like hot a hot tuna? sandwich. Do you remember that brand from the 80s, Hot Tuna? No, I don't. Seen? It was, and, and I'm sure the sexual innuendo was completely <laughs> intended, but um, I hope so. <laughs> it, it was this sort of cartoon fish. What were they selling? Like it was tuna? Just, it was like a sportswear kind of, it was like a, <laughs> I don't know. They might as well have called it sweat. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was like uh, Ed Hardy or something, you know, it was like a clothing Hot tuna line. That's hilarious. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I just like tuna sandwiches. You may have noticed our new sound that covers up uh, things that we d- won't let go out on this show. That was a baby lamb you just heard there, by the way. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> really cute. Can you imagine coming out to your parents and being like, mom, I'm guacamole. <laughs> like, <laughs> in the LGBTQ I mean, sandwich. If she's white, she's going to love it. Yeah. Because you know how much bitches love their avocado toast. Uh, yeah. 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 Sort of like the um, the the analogous conversation that um, David and Stevie had mm-hmm. in Schitt's Creek about wine. Right. You right. see, I only drink red wine. And- up until last night, I assume that you only drank red wine. And David talks about how he likes red wine, white wine, mm-hmm. occasional rosé. And he once dated a uh, 
Merlot that used to be a Chardonnay or something. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Which wasn't even the gayest thing on that show. (laughs) Oh, no, not by far. I think the gayest thing on that show was when David serenaded Patrick to Tina Turner's Simply the Best that in was Rose cute Apothecary. as hell, though. <laughs> it was so sweet. Yeah, it was that so... was really sweet. Yeah. What do you think is the gayest show? Oof, it's a tough one. Will and Grace, but that was way back when... That's a good point. The only gay thing you could show on TV was a kiss on the cheek, right? Right, And, and adopting right. a baby. Together. The new she is pretty gay. Yeah? yeah? Is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, and it's good, too. I liked it. Um, Bridgerton... Just had that uh, lesbian scene. Uh, I mean, it, it was, was just less, sort of implied. Yeah, I mean, it was less lesbian and more like prostitutes doing their job. Uh, you don't know how into it they actually were. I can't believe how much I like Bridgerton. I know, right? It's just a soap <laughs> opera. Oh, it's so good. But it's set in this fantastical world of, I would say, the late 1800s. Oh, yeah. Because they've got hot air balloons. I would... Is it maybe even the mid 1800s? Uh, yeah, mid to late 1800s, Somewhere in there. I would say. Yeah, yeah. Definitely before 1900. Right, right. And everything is gorgeous. I love the outfits. Everything's I love the outfits. Gorgeous. So much. It's gorgeous. It's about society, but it's this sort of, I don't want to say utopian society, but it's mm-hmm. this race blind society. Well, yeah. There are Asians, Indians, mm-hmm. whites, blacks living well, together, mass hysteria. And the biggest thing I like about it is that they explain it. Okay. You know, like they could have done a whole Hamilton thing where it is just race blind and they don't worry about it, but they do actually have a canonical reason why it's, you know, mixed race. And it's basically that the king at the time fell in love with a a woman who was black and made her the queen. And after that, they were like, this is stupid. Let's not be racist, y'all. And they were all like, yeah, okay, sounds good. It's a little utopian and probably not how things would actually go if that was a real thing, but... Honestly, I dig it. I but think it's imagine super cool. if it were like that. That'd be so nice. You know, that's the only crappy thing is you know that if that really did happen, there would be some assholes who'd be like, but we don't want to share. We just want yeah. things to be the way that they were. Right. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they suck. <laughs> so I, Pride events aren't happening in Idaho Falls until later in the month. Mm-hmm. Let's run them down. It's the big weekend is the weekend of Friday, June 21st mm-hmm. and Saturday, June 22nd. Friday night, June 21st, the drag show at the West Bank. Always fun. (laughs) Yeah. Then Saturday, the 22nd, the parade starts at 10 a.m. It goes from the Unitarian Universalist Church to the West Bank. Oh, nice. And back to about where they started, about the Idaho Falls Greenbelt stage. Oh, nice. That's super fun. There's a little parking lot by the Memorial Roundabout and Mm -hmm. then a stage. Oh, that's so fun. And try to picture that in your mind in between... D and E streets, because we'll be talking about that two more times in just a minute. And then right after the parade is the festival from 10 to 5 that day. Oh, nice. Now, they call it a family-friendly festival, and I don't know because I haven't been. I'll go check it out this year. Mm -hmm. But I will say, as a uh, raised conservative but made up my mind to be a little more progressive Mm -hmm. parent, when I took my kids to uh, to a Pride event in Milwaukee... When I lived there for like three years, um, I was like, okay, yeah, let's just go check it out. And uh, what's the harm in bringing the kids? So many dicks and titties. <laughs> and and by what I mean by that is in the artwork, in the yeah. jewelry that you would get. So after I sort of was driving home, I thought, would I take my kids to a festival about heterosexuality? I mean, isn't that like any straight wedding? <laughs> yeah, I guess. But the answer is no, I wouldn't. So I hate to apply my experience there uh, 1,500 miles away 15 Mm -hmm. years ago to something that might be happening here, but... I would be really shocked if that was the same experience here. Yeah. Just because this is a much more conservative area Yeah. to begin with. Um, And realistically, like I think that that is sort of the old way of doing pride parades. You know, I think that they have made them much more family friendly as they've gone on just because they recognize that more people will come the, you know, less racy it is. The less, yeah. I mean, the thing is that- PG-13 plus. (laughs) Right. I mean, 15 years ago, they were just getting, you know, some momentum behind them to do stuff like that. Well, I remember the first one, wasn't it just in the last 10 years? 
I the, mean, the first one yeah. was like some people with signs on the Broadway bridge. Yeah. And that was it, like a mm-hmm. dozen people. Mm-hmm. And then last year, the parade went by, and I was like, oh, cool. They've got some really big sponsors, which I'm, I'm mm-hmm. glad to see on this. Uh, INL, Ermac, and of course, Adam and Eve. Right, always a good one. <laughs> and uh, oh, the following weekend, Friday, June 28th, it's Chuckers Pride Night. Oh, fun. Nice. So go swing a bat at some balls, boys. <laughs> How long did you think about that before you came up with it that just joke? came out. I'm so it's, impressed. I'm I would have never guessed. <laughs> Well, and also, Remember to wear a glove. Well, and we've also <laughs> talked plenty of times about how damn good baseball ass, baseball players' asses look in those damn pants. The, the Chuckers got some cake. Chuckers they got do. some cake. Yeah. Like, realistically, I kind of think that watching a baseball game might be the gayest thing you can do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, We're I, kidding. We got to go. We got to go. I got to go once a summer and have an overpriced hot dog. I'll take you. You got it. Yeah. I'll take right. you any old time. Great. It's a date. <laughs> we also have to get, and here's how we know we're coming up on our one year anniversary, mm-hmm. the very last of our lost episodes that are oh, lost right. and gone forever. Uh-huh. Probably not on a hard drive somewhere in this room. <laughs> We talked about gay bacon. Do you remember gay bacon? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, that was such a good bit. I'm so glad we're resurrecting it for this. It's the Sour Patch Strips. <laughs> uh, it's not Sour Patch. It's the... Um, it's But they're sour and they're yeah, strips. Yeah, they're sour strips. And they're rainbow colored. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they do totally look like gay bacon. <laughs> Matt Reif, about this time last year, Matt Reif had just popped. Suddenly mm-hmm. he went... He went from nobody knowing his name to everybody Everyone, knowing his name uh-huh. and all the ladies going, oh, Matt Reif. <laughs> right. So that was our, yeah, our last, last episode was about Matt Reif and gay bacon. Uh-huh. We'll see if we can find some gay bacon in the month of June. And, you know, speaking of weird sniggities of the snack variety. Did you bring a sniggity? I did. I did. Now, I originally had two. Okay. But then I ran into my friend who loves Dr. Pepper, and I had to give her one. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Right. But these are Dr. Pepper Jack's Link's, sorry, Jack Link's Wild Okay, let's, sticks. let's hit this. Right? She had never had Dr. Pepper Jelly Bellies. I know. Until I brought insane. her Even some. Even I've had those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and right now, don't you have a creamy coconut Dr. Diet <sighs> Dr. Pepper in your fridge? That's Can the, I have the best? That is the surprise hit of the summer for oh. me. I mean, it came out a few months ago. Man, I had one of those with one of those um, creamy car- creamy coconut uh, popsicles. Oh, my gosh. Hmm. Oh, I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah. Mm. You could you could chop up the coconut popsicle into ice cubes and <gasps> put it in your Dr. Pepper creamy coconut. And get a dirty Dr. Pepper. You're so smart. Jack Link's Wild mm. Dr. Pepper okay. snack stick. That is a wild flavor. <laughs> is it? I think that wild is exactly the way to describe it. So, here's how I think this makes sense. Ooh, five grams of protein. Think of all of the, like, suburban moms who make, like, a crock pot pulled pork or something and pour, like, a whole bottle of Coke in there. Yeah. You know? hmm And, I mean, think of, like, Little Smokies. They're basically, like, sausages wrapped in bacon with a little bit of brown sugar, right? So I get it. I think the sweet and savory thing can work. This almost tastes a little too cherry, though. It's like if you took a piece of meat and dipped it in some of that Dairy Queen (laughs) cherry uh, cone dip stuff. For me, it's fairly I mean, I can't stop eating it, though. (laughs) In fact, the the minute you said cherry, I was like, oh, there it is. Right. Hmm. But yeah, it Hmm. tastes like meat that's been soaked in Dr. Pepper. Okay, and here's the funny thing. It says, inspired by the flavors of Dr. Pepper. Mm-hmm. So even they're not, like, taking the whole Well, but also, it's got thing. the Dr. Pepper logo on it, so right. everybody's signed off on it and said, yeah, that's Dr. Pepper-y enough. Right, right. But I guess they're, even they're not saying, like, expect this to taste like a cola. Right. You know, but it kind of does, though. I, I mean, dig it. I, I kind of like it, though. <laughs> this is like my third bite. You want another one? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to need a flosser in a minute. <laughs> Makeup. Can we get a flosser in here? <laughs> it's one of those rich flavors that I think is fun to try once, <laughs> but I wouldn't want another one right now. Well, I'm glad I only bought one stick then. I first observed that with the spicy, what's the one I have in spicy, my- Spicy, sweet, chili Doritos, Jack Link's. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it was Jack Links that did those too. So it they're doing was. crossovers <laughs> with all sorts of 
right. Coca-Cola brand products. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is kind of funny because just the other day you were talking to me about how they're doing all of these random weird flavors. Like when we got uh, the pink lemonade Kit Kats. Mm-hmm. Oh, the best, by the way. What a time to be alive when you can get food flavored food. Food flavored food, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember when like blueberry blue diamond almonds came out. Oh. I was like, what the hell's going on here? Oh, weren't those the best, though? Yeah. And they're like this great shade of purple gray for uh-huh. Pride Month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So two other things happening at the Green Belt stage. I've heard it called the Green Belt Band Shell, too. But oh, again, yeah. it's right there off the parking lot off Memorial, by mm-hmm. the roundabout, by the temple. The River Concert Series begins next Tuesday, June 11th, and runs every Tuesday evening at 7. Oh, nice. So if you're looking for a little walk around the green belt or want to sit and chill, I've seen people bring their own chairs Mm -hmm. and coolers to this thing. You can do that. That's super nice. Yeah. Every Tuesday till August 27th. Okay. So it starts next Tuesday, June 11th with McKinley Silson, which is, get this, Electric Campfire Blues. Ooh. That sounds cool. That actually does sound really cool. Okay. But are they going to be singing like... Weird campfire songs like that one from Bob, Bob's Burgers. Uh, who's that knocking on my hole? <laughs> <laughs> or the one in Three Amigos, Blue Shadows <laughs> on the Trail. There we go. Yeah. Uh, June 18th, the Upscometrists. Oh, I've seen them. It's like optometrists, only upska. So apparently they have really good vision <laughs> and they do ska. Remember so- ska? I do. As right. I was really into it in high school back when I first saw the Opscometrists. Okay. They got me into it for a second. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Started out a little ska. <laughs> right, right. My favorite ska band of all time is Real Big Fish. Oh, uh, okay. They've got an album with Jed the Fish from KROQ, world famous oh, KROQ funny. in Los Angeles, on the uh-huh. cover. And their song, Nothing, huh. is great. That's cool. Probably comes with an explicit warning, just saying. <laughs> you know what? I bet I have an optometrist CD at my house right now. If oh, I yeah? was like if I was guessing, I still remember a bunch of their songs. I bet I could sing along to a bunch of them. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we might have to go for that. We might or, have to. That'd be fun. I really want to be there June twenty fifth for the Jazz House Big Band. <gasps> they they did I'm the so music. I'm so there for that. I yeah. love that stuff. We closed out a show a few episodes ago mm-hmm. when they did the Chamber of Commerce. <gasps> Event. Oh, they were so good there. They yeah. They were really good. They were the bomb. Like mm-hmm. really good. I'm so down to go see them. That sounds awesome. And then Saturday, June 29th, mm-hmm. it's Scoop Jam. Ooh, I love Scoop Jam. That's always a good time. I've never been to one. So I went to like half of one once, but I was performing, so I didn't get to enjoy it. It sucked okay. a little for that. But here's the thing. I love ice cream. Let me see if I can sell you on this concept in six words or less. All you can eat. Ice cream. (laughs) Right? Doesn't that sound amazing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Tickets are $8 in advance. Lincoln Post. That's what, like, a normal cone would cost you most places. Yeah. You know? So, like, if you're going to spend the 8 bucks, get your 8 bucks worth. And get your tickets (laughs) in advance because they're $10 at the gate. Mm -hmm. The proceeds benefit our very good friends at the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission and the Domestic Violence and SA Center. Is that what we have to say for the YouTube gods to smile on us? Almost definitely, yep. (sighs) All right. It's a great charity, too. They say something interesting at the end. They said, kids three and under are free if they're accompanied by an adult. I would hope so. Well, I guess I'm just wondering how a three-year-old would get there on its own. Okay, here's the thing, though. (laughs) This isn't Rugrats. It's not Stewie from Family Guy. (laughs) You're not wrong, and I could definitely see. Uh, okay, I've worked in. in what does customer it matter to them? Before. No, hear me out. I've worked in customer service before. If a three-year-old can drive uh, there, park, and walk up to the thing, I think he deserves a free cone. That's the horrible thing, though. <laughs> it wouldn't take that. Uh-huh. I've worked in customer service long enough that I know for a fact that there are adults who would take their three-year-old to that, drop them off, and leave. I I hope that's not true ever. I know for a fact it is. Oh I've seen God. I've seen crap like that happen so much, dude. Like they just sort of expect the cashier or whoever is working or whoever's there to just be like a free babysitter, you know? Right. That's yeah. sad. I think up until age three, it ought to be 
you can be as many feet away from me as number of years old you are. Man, I would take that even further. I would say up to age like 15, <laughs> you know, because realistically, have you seen some 15 year olds going out in public? Like they don't know how to act still. Oh, yeah. You know, like I should be able to you should be in my field of vision. You know, I actually think feet by age you is a perfect metric. <laughs> generation alphas in your skibbity toilets and your Fortnite video <laughs> games. Are you getting the whole fam damnly together this summer? You've set the date. You've got an event. You've sent out the invites. You know they're all coming. You've even got the venue. But what about the stuff? Well, if you actually need someone a little bit more capable, maybe someone who's actually done this before, DIY Wedding and Event Rentals is your premier wedding and event rental company. They've got a stunning selection of high quality items to elevate any occasion. They've got you covered so you can relax. You can haul it away in your truck or trailer. You can use their trailer. You can even rent their special drink trailer to take your event to the next level. I mean, only if you wanted to be super cute. If you don't, then I guess whatever. <laughs> Contact <laughs> DIY Wedding and Event Rentals today. 208-403-2040. That's 208-403-2040. Do it sooner rather than later because items are renting fast or find them on Facebook. But whatever you do, drop promo code IFAF to save 15% at checkout. Everyone knows that summer is the time for grilling. And realistically, if you're going to go through all the trouble of inviting people over, you've got to make sure that the meat is up to par. I really wanted to impress a friend that was in town, and I took this before picture of Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company ribeyes in my Ninja 5-in-1 grill. I'm sorry there's no plated pictures, because the minute we saw them, we had to dive in and start eating. They were just so buttery and fantastic. Y'all scarfed them down. Of course you did because they're actual good quality beef. This is one piece of meat from one piece of cow. And starting in 2024, Virgin River also sells in smaller orders by the pound. Roasts, ground beef, steaks, and various cuts. You can order every month or just when you run out and delivery is available. That's Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. Find them on Facebook. Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. Drop promo code IFAF to save 15%. You know, shopping for homes is a lot like those dating apps. Oh? You might find yourself doing a lot of swiping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of homes out there and you might get lost in the sea and, and wonder, are those estimates accurate? If you need help buying a home, if you need help, in fact, selling a home is kind of, there's a lot of swiping there too. If you get uh -huh. multiple offers... And you need some guidance as to going through which offer is the best one for you? Well, and you already know us for telling it like it is here. Of course, we're going to keep that up for you if we help you buy or sell your home. We keep it real. We help you get the best price, terms, and conditions when you're selling your home. So go ahead and contact us, info at ifafpod.com. If you or someone you care about is selling their home. That's info at ifafpod.com. Because, you know, even though we're amateur podcasters, we are professional realtors. Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan, both brokered by Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. Info at ifafpod.com. Something we didn't get to over the weekend, but uh, relatively excited about. I try to see every single one that comes along. The oh, new yeah. Museum of Idaho exhibit. Which is super exciting. Now, this is an interactive flight experience. Not only is it talking about like the flight of birds, for example, but also planes and rockets. So basically all kinds of flight. It's got a space cool shuttle. space element to it, too, which is always super fun. And of course, as the name implies, there's lots of interactive stuff that you can do with it, too. Yeah, I saw that they posted a uh, interview from JoLynn Thomas, your friend mm -hmm. and mine, JoLynn. Uh, did you know that she and I actually have the same birthday? No kidding. I know. Isn't that funny? January 25th. Uh-huh. Also a great day for me. Yeah, right. But the Museum of Idaho posted her interview with them on their Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's at least one day out of the summer where if you hear the kids say, Mom, I'm bored. Right. And you don't want to just put a tablet in front of them. You can go get the edutainment Yes. At Museum of Idaho. It goes through, it's a six-month exhibit, so it goes from June 1st through January 5th. Right. Now, that being said, this is different from their other exhibit, Idaho Takes Flight, which is actually a wedding dress made out of a parachute. What? Yeah, it's from like World War II. Apparently, it's from, I believe it's a guy who lived in Rexburg, uh -huh. who obviously was fighting over in World War II. Um, shockingly... 
fabric wasn't super easy to come by, especially like tons of white fabric. Um, but because of the, well, mainly because of all the fabric rations. And so since you couldn't reuse parachutes, uh, this gal wanted to have an, well, she was just going to wear her normal officer uniform, but basically someone offered her a parachute to make a dress out of instead. And she was like, okay, sounds great. Humans are so resourceful. Right? That's yeah. awesome. And it was their son who donated it to the museum too, which I think is really cool. So Museum of Idaho, you are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5, 21 finger gun Pew-pew. salute and chef's kiss. To you. Well done. Another thing we didn't make it to over the weekend, beer fest at Sandy Downs. Have I ever told you my beer fest story? No, you haven't. This is like 10, 15 years ago. Uh, Went with a group of people. Do you have the Hickamups? I do. It's almost like I did go to Beer Fest. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, if you live, we live near 49th and Hit. If you live anywhere near 49th, Mm -hmm. you can, at night, you can hear concerts at Sandy Downs. Oh, cool. And in the fall, you can hear football games at Hillcrest High School. Oh, wow. I guess I wouldn't assume that that sound would travel that far. Yeah. 49th yeah. is right about the middle there, mm-hmm. in between Sunnyside and 64th East. Anyway, um, I was with a group of people, and I really wasn't paying attention. Uh-huh. I had met a bunch of friends there, and it was cool. Anyway, they all wanted to get a ride home. So you walk out, and there was – this was before, right before Uber came to Idaho Falls. Right, right. And so there were taxis. You know, mm-hmm. taxis new to run by there. Yeah. Anyway – not all taxis are yellow cabs. No. You know, sometimes they can be other vehicles. Yeah. Vans are very popular as taxis for a myriad of reasons. Somebody was oh. like, yeah, I got one right here. Okay, great. We're, we're going this way. Heard mm-hmm. the cattle to the thing. Right. Got in. That was only like a seven minute drive to our house. Uh-huh. That's nice. Yeah. And the guy wasn't a cab driver at all. Come to find out. So we pull out. He just out. like let you guys get in and he was like, okay, I guess I'm taking these people home. <laughs> yeah. We go on to Woodruff. We get pulled over <laughs> almost immediately. <laughs> Expired tags. Um, <laughs> and I even noticed kind of a smoky smell in the car when we got in. I didn't think much of it because it's a, I was thought it, a it was a cab. Skunky smell? <laughs> no. Okay. I okay. know the difference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, we got pulled over Two more times in that seven minutes. Really? The guy was pretty sure a meth head trying to make some extra money. So I'll take things that probably won't happen today in this day and age for 500, Alex. Wow. (laughs) But like he wasn't like he was just some dude driving people back and forth trying to make some money. And I, and I hope he's gotten some help since then. But yeah, like it, it was it was so bad that wow. when he got into our neighborhood, I said, okay, that's our house. Like we stopped short a block or two. Oh, smart. You know, I paid him a little extra. All right, have a great day, buddy. But uh-huh. um, yeah, don't just get into any car, especially <laughs> if one of your drunk friends from Beer Fest says, hey, we found a car. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and saying we found a car versus we found a taxi. Pretty big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Something else notable that happened in East Idaho over the weekend, they broke ground on the new Rexburg, the second Rexburg temple. Mm -hmm. I remember when Rexburg (laughs) didn't even have one temple. Now they have two. (laughs) Right. I know. I was kind of impressed by that too. It was going to be called the North Rexburg temple, Mm -hmm. but then they changed, but they named it. um, Teton River, Idaho temple. uh, Okay. I Mm -hmm. like that name. Now let's throw up a side-by-side comparison so you can see the Idaho Falls Temple built in 1937, I Mm want to say, and the new Rexburg Second Temple, Teton River Temple. Check these out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say they look the same, but kind of, they have some similarities, don't they? So they do open houses of temples before they dedicate them. Yeah. And I went to the first Rexburg Temple's open house. Oh, you did. And now I feel like we should, at this point, go to this one's open house, too, because why not? And And, and I went to the Idaho Falls before they did the rededication. (gasps) Yes. I actually think I went to that, too. I went to that. I watched them. They had taken Moroni off to polish them. Right. I watched them put put it back on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. Now, I also have been inside the Idaho Falls Temple as a temple, too. Okay. Yeah, back in the day. Um, and can I just say, I'm ba- so... Back when you were going to heaven? 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm so glad that they decided not to name this the Rexburg Temple North, because for all of us bitches who don't know north from south or east from west, <laughs> that would get real confusing real fast. <laughs> Is the North Rexburg Temple north or south of the Rexburg Temple? <laughs> I mean, I get it, but also don't... like. Anytime someone gives me directions and they say, oh, you're just going to go to Walgreens, then turn north. No, no. These How days, dare you? <laughs> these days, anytime anyone gives me directions, period, I kind of have to chuckle. <sighs> well, like yeah, you've never heard of Google Maps. Yeah, that's fair. That's and fair. it's usually, you know, 60 plus people that are being super helpful. So I let them oh, finish. Sure. I always let them give me directions mm -hmm. and I completely go off to another place. Unicorns, right. <laughs> glitter, rainbows, sparkles. Mm -hmm. And then when they stop talking, I say, okay, thanks. And then you get Google in my it. car, type it into Google Maps yes. and go. Okay. There are so many times <laughs> when I'll be talking to someone and they're like, oh, hey, you want to go meet me here? You know where that is, right? And I'll be like, no, I don't. But, and they'll cut me off and be like, oh, well, it's here. And I'm like, no, it's fine. I'm just going to Google it. Yeah. Like, you don't tell me because I'm. A, I'm not going to remember. I'm a goldfish. How dare you? Okay? You'll be talking about turn right at the big rock. Come on. No, no. <laughs> Especially because I'll see a rock of this size and be like, is that the is big that rock? Is that the big rock? Is this the is big rock? Is that the red fence? Right? Is that the barn? Yeah, you yeah. never know. You never know. And if you tell me north, south, east, or west, I will go the opposite direction every time. When <laughs> I move to a new city, which may or may not ever happen again. Mm-hmm. But the locals always orient themselves with something. In Salt Lake. A landmark, yeah. Yeah, it's the temple. Mm -hmm. Or it's the um, Wasatch, which are to the east, mm -hmm. not the west. It'd be easier if the Wasatch were on the west. Yeah, that would be. Uh, and the Ochres uh, to the west. Mm -hmm. And if you know the difference between each mountain range, which is pretty easy to figure out, you know which way you're going. It's a mountain and a mountain. You're in Taylor Mountain is pretty easy to see from anywhere in Idaho sure. Falls. You know, when I was first learning to drive and like getting oriented, uh, the thing that I used the most was the Evan the Evans Greens Towers on Lincoln. Okay, yes. Especially because things were a lot flatter back in my day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so you could see those from like anywhere. And I remember for a while I was going to church at the uh, single young adult ward in Yukon, and I had only gone there a handful of times. I had no idea how to get home to Iona. <laughs> I didn't know where I, I just knew I followed this road and I got to the thing and then I didn't know how to make my way back out. <laughs> didn't your parents Parents print you MapQuest directions? No, of course they didn't. They were they weren't gonna waste precious printer ink on me. <laughs> no. Figure it out, kid. I did. Yeah, basically. But I remember one time I took I took a wrong turn leaving church. No idea where I was, and I basically had to stop, look around. I saw those Evan Grains towers, Evans Grain towers. Those are so hard to say, and I just followed those like the goddamn North Star. <laughs> we have a Facebook photo when we did our shoot from the West Bank. I always call it call it the Red Line. Personally. Was the Red Line was yeah. Quality Inn and Suites is now Comfort Suites. Yes. We also had our drone guy take a picture of the temple. It was a beautiful fall day. The river was still. And you can see the Evans Grain Towers in the background. You I'm totally like, what are can. those things? Oh, that's the... Yeah. So that's, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, you got to learn where the landmarks are. You do. You do. And realistically, if anyone tells me like, hey, meet me at this place and I don't know where it is, I just have to be like, okay, where is it by? Because yeah. if it's by there, I can find it from there. You know, but don't say what street it's on. Don't say what direction it is. Tell me what landmark it's by and then I will find it. I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that that is sort of a gender thing. Dudes know northeast, west, south. Mm -hmm. It's very important for me to be oriented. Yeah. But uh, ladies like the landmarks. Yeah, no, I've got no sense of direction. <laughs> Ideally, if it's a shopping center, I'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're telling me to meet you by like, I don't know, TJ Maxx, Kohl's, uh the mall. You just have that womanly yeah. pull. You just sort of follow your nose. <laughs> I mean, I know where to, to the get the stuff that I need. <laughs> I can smell savings. <laughs> right, right. Where is it at in relation to Target? <laughs> I mean, realistically, if it's by Target, I can find it. Any Target <laughs> in any town. You know what? That's the thing. I bet that is the one and only time that you could tell me a direction and I could find it is if you were directly directing me to a Target. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it is, <laughs> it's definitely a destination. I, I feel like you got to hit the target. Well, and also I feel like they just pump pheromones into that place so you can smell yeah. for miles. 
I wonder know? if they do that. I kind of think they do. Like, that's why chicks go freaking crazy yeah. there. That and all the good. De- <laughs> well, and that's the thing. All the good deals at only the very front of the store in that little tiny section. <laughs> Everywhere else. It's, it's a little spendy. It's nice, but it's spendy. <laughs> Interesting. Target was the first one to do that, right? They call theirs the hot spot. Uh-huh. And yep. now Walmart has the dollar shop or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. that that's a concept that yeah, and honestly, Walmart didn't come up with first. I know, and also I do like the Walmart one too. Yeah, it's not as good as as Target's, but it's pretty good. I like it. I think it's cute. A couple episodes ago, we were talking about how Rexburg's going to get a Chipotle. That's oh, really? the rumor. Are they going to get the Temple or the Chipotle first? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's going to come first? I would imagine a Chipotle. Who is your real golden god, Rexburg? <laughs> 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 Kidding. Have you heard this? People on social media have been dragging Chipotle so hard for, you know, when you see the menu item picture up on the board and then you look down at your bowl or your burrito or whatever Mm -hmm. you get and you're disappointed. Sure, sure. Chipotle, if you don't know, has a setup similar to Subway where you start at one end Mm -hmm. and you end at the other end. and Right. And sort of pick out what you want as you go. In the middle, you Mm -hmm. tell them what to put on, like Cafe Rio, Costa Vida. Mobetas. uh, Mobetas. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So- some people were so disappointed. They were posting the, these photos on social media next to a comparison of what the menu item is supposed to look like. Uh-huh. Anyway, apparently Chipotle just said they sort of caved and sent out a memo to their stores saying, hey, if somebody's filming the process, you just no questions asked. You just load that bowl up as much as possible. Whoa. So there you go, hungry, starving students. In Rexburg, Uh once you get a Chipotle, and I guess somebody else, you know, filmed it and said it works and was holding Uh this full bowl. Huh. (laughs) Interesting. I I think we had to go there with like two GoPros attached to our (laughs) You know, here's the thing. Order a huge plate of nachos. If your item doesn't look like the one featured on the menu, it's probably because you chose things different than the one on the menu. If not, it's false advertising. Right. But, like, that's the thing. It's kind of like Subway sand- sandwiches. Like, they have the ones that are, like, the sort of pre-made, sort of, like, if you get this, you get these things on it, da-da-da, and you can customize from there. But if you do a build-your-own and it tastes bad at the end, there's only one person to blame there, buddy. <laughs> there's This would be a fun experiment to try. Somebody went on Uber Eats uh-huh. and... um ordered a menu item, but then, I, I don't know, say Burrito Supreme, but they said, you know, uh, no beef, no beans, no cheese, no tortilla. Like, mm-hmm. So they ordered like a $5 menu item, uh-huh. took everything off of it, and it still came out to 19 bucks. <laughs> like, what did the delivery driver show up with exactly? Yeah, I, I kind of want to know too. <laughs> or you know the famous- I would assume wrapping. <laughs> the famous Domino's pizza, no cheese, left beef. Yes, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, and it just looks sad. It looks <laughs> you, so sad. You open the box and there's basically a pizza crust and these mm-hmm. beef yeah, little sausages, beef bits. whatever, yeah, yeah. like all over the box <laughs> right. because they couldn't just get it on the left. Well, I mean, they got it mostly on the left. There's like a little bit on one piece of the right and like two or three pieces yeah. in the box. But yeah, they get it mostly on the left, right. you know. Again, as someone who's worked in, in customer service, I I have totally had instances where people have asked me for just wild shit like that. You know, like just stuff that to a normal person makes no sense. But realistically, to someone with like a little baby toddler palate who doesn't know how to like eat or enjoy their food, I get it. I wonder how much more difficult retail and eatery workers' lives, jobs have become Mm -hmm. because of TikTokers and influencers. Oh, I know it's gotten worse. And Instagrammers. Well, especially because I think that people have taken that whole, like, the customer's always right thing so much further now, especially because they know now that they have some kind of platform that they can blast them on. You know, back in the day, Karen would be like, I'm calling the news. I'm going to tell them that you did this to me, blah, blah, blah. Now Karen can put it on her own Facebook page. Exactly. Yeah. Because when everyone's a critic, there's no standard. What do you mean exactly? Okay. Anton Ego and Ratatouille. He knows food. He knows what's good food. He knows what's bad food. Oh, but you're saying when idiots become critics. Right. Okay. When some person who thinks that buttered noodles are at the peak (laughs) of cuisine, okay, you can't expect them to taste a delicious, for example, Doritos Locos Taco and and think that that's good because they think that buttered noodles are good. You know? Right. Yeah. If, If somebody orders, you know, chicken Alfredo without the Alfredo sauce and then gets upset. Mm hmm. 
that it doesn't have the Alfredo sauce on it. Yeah, or that it's bland and flavorless. Like, yeah, right. you took away the thing that makes the flavor, <laughs> <Yeah>. baby. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. One of the reasons we don't do too much news on this show is by the time our, it's a weekly show. So by the time it launches, it can be old news. And I think that's the case with these next two stories. Um, Chad Daybell found guilty, guilty for the murder of his ex-wife and Mm -hmm. little JJ and Tylee. Mm -hmm. And really after Lori's trial, is anyone surprised? I know I wasn't, you know. May you burn in hell, you... Yeah, what a piece of shit. And also, do you? I don't know if you caught this in Lori's trial when her son called him a Peter a Peter Griffin looking ass dude or something like that. Yeah, which honestly hilarious. And there were a couple of times when I was uh, watching the trial and I saw that and I was like, he's right. Just <laughs> you no, go, Colby. <laughs> no pity. No, that guy's a douche and he's ugly. <laughs> like, if his crime of being a douche wasn't enough. He's an ugly douche, and that's even worse. I mean... It's funny. I'm sorry. I'm glad he was mentally sound enough to stand trial, because I think he's a crazy person. Right, right. Well, and he's definitely got, like... He's got his head so far up his own ass, okay? I'm shocked that his brain even works. You'd think he'd be replaced by colon. (laughs) Too many Disney movies, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe he took the concept of believe in yourself way too far. Yeah, believe in yourself that you are a god. Believe in yourself... And acknowledge reality, man. Yeah. All right. Second story. President Trump becomes the first president in U.S. history to be convicted of a felony. Now, I'm sure he's going to appeal. Whatever your views on Trump are, fine. But boy, the reaction was mixed on Facebook. Because yeah. in the same 30 seconds, I saw an American flag. Mm-hmm. As if to say, yes, America and justice and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then three posts down, I saw an upside down American flag, which, as you know, if you fly the flag upside down, it is a state of dire emergency. Right. The worst one I saw was Jesus was convicted in a sham trial and crucified, and I still follow him. (sighs) Not a comparison. Right. Jesus and Trump, two very different situations. Yeah. Can Can we all agree on that? Like, I really feel like politicians should be your puppy person. What do you mean? Okay. Have you ever heard of the whole two beers and a puppy test? Uh Uh-uh. Okay. So basically, it's something that was developed by a writer while they were at Esquire. And the metric is, is this someone who I would get two beers with? And is this someone who I would let watch my puppy over the weekend? Okay. Some people are a no and a no. Some people are a yes and a yes. And some people are a no and a yes or a yes and a no. Uh Uh-huh. You know? So... I feel like politicians, at the very least, should be a no and a yes. I actually kind of think that that's the best politician. They're not someone you necessarily want to get a beer with. You know, they're not someone who seems fun and cool. Right. They actually seem like a square, you know. But you do trust them enough to watch your puppy over the weekend because you know they're responsible and they're smart and they know what to do. I think that's great. I know, right? Who doesn't love beer and puppies? Yeah. So here's the big news, I would say, for our show, anyway. Uh U.S. News and World Report has released their 2024 rankings of the best state and the worst states. Oh, interesting. Okay. And guess who's number one? Well, if it's big news for us, I would hope it's Idaho. Utah. Ah. Oh, missed it by that much. Which I think we're better because we have better liquor laws, just saying. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Among other things. Not wrong. (laughs) Yeah. They've got medical marijuana, though. Oh, that's true. See, Carly, that's south. I'm pointing south toward Utah right now. Um, I would have thought that was south. (laughs) So, okay. Uh, They evaluated eight categories, healthcare, education, economy, infrastructure, opportunity, fiscal stability, crime and corrections, and natural environment. Okay. More than 70 metrics and tens of thousands of data points were considered. Wow. Employment, internet access, affordability, public safety. Now, okay, why would we even bring this up then if we didn't win? I mean, I have to assume we're pretty close to the top because we're pretty close to what Utah's about. Yeah, we're fifth. That's pretty good. So it goes Utah, number one, New Hampshire, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Idaho. I mean, that's like, what, 10th percentile? Yeah. Right? That's... I think that's pretty good. Top five out of 50? Yeah. So suck it, Iowa. Yeah. Number six. Yeah. Even if we do get mistaken for you a lot, Iowa. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, way to go, Utah. 
I think they're wrong. I think I think, I think Idaho's better. We might be a little biased, though. Here's the thing. I think that they are probably statistically better, but I think culturally, Idaho's better. I mm-hmm. think we're a little cooler, a little more laid back, a little less of douchebags up here. Now, you might be asking. <laughs> Sorry. And we're way better drivers. Mike and Carly from IFAF, give me three reasons why Idaho is better than Utah. Here they come. Number one, Cheech and Chong is at it again with their cruise choose ads. Oh, no. Are they crapping on us again? This time we'll put I mean, it up we here. Do, we, we deserve it. It's fine. <laughs> well, we're the only state they can't ship to because of our weird weed laws. Yeah. But they use the distracted boyfriend meme. Mm-hmm. You know, the one. He's the, walking with one girl, but looking back at another. Yeah. Yeah. And she's noticing him doing that. Very upset. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, there are other examples throughout history. One and famously including Charlie Chaplin. Oh, like the shiny Pokemon of that meme. Where that, yeah, where, <laughs> where that happens. So in this example, the boy is the United States. The uh-huh. girl he's checking out is Cheech and Chong's cruise shoes. Right. And the girl looking at him in disgust is Idaho. I mean, <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to bear with it. It's fine. <laughs> until it's for now legalized you on know, a federal level. I'm just going to say they thought that gay marriage would never happen. And now it's Pride Month. So look, we both grew up in Idaho. We're used to people making fun of us. Do your damnedest, Cheech and mm-hmm. Chong. Yeah. All right. So that's reason number one why Idaho is better. Reason number two, (laughs) Idaho is better. There's a guy named Lucky who decided to sell his house and live in a Tesla cyber truck. The other night, I was driving down hit and I ran it. I didn't run into him. I saw his Tesla cyber truck driving down the road. Okay. Yeah. He's just getting started. I think he started out in Texas. Oh. Been to New Mexico and Colorado. Okay. He's currently in Yellowstone National Park. Good for him. So links to his YouTube channel and uh, his Instagram is in are in this post. He's mm-hmm. at Lucky Go Round on YouTube. Mm-hmm. But what a cool concept, right? In its own way. Mm-hmm. I mean... I think the Cybertrucks are so ugly. Well, uh, (laughs) like they're just not a good looking car. And there's the whole finger crushing thing. There've been a couple of different recalls on those. Well, and Cybertrucks don't do. Elon Musk actually stated that Cybertrucks would be able to ford small bodies of water. Yeah. And check this out. Here's a Cybertruck doing exactly not that. Yeah, no, no way. They Cybertrucks can't do what trucks do. Of course not. So the third and final reason why Idaho is better than Utah, and we'll leave you with this. I don't know if you've ever seen this. I found it in my internet travels. There is an old motel in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Anyway, it used to be called the State Motel, and it has a chimney in the shape of Idaho. Which is so cool, honestly. If you're looking for a destination this summer, mm-hmm. and Coeur d'Alene's on your list, go check out, maybe even stay there. It's now called the... North Idaho Inn. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I'd like to see them make a chimney out of the shape of Utah. Yeah. Look real dumb. <laughs> Isn't Aren't all chimneys the shape of Utah? <laughs> no, they're too long. Just sort of stretched out. <laughs> you, you can't stretch <laughs> it or else it doesn't it work. <laughs> <laughs> if you're one of those vacationing families that loves to hop into Winnebago and go see the biggest ball of twine in Minnesota, Aww. be sure to stop by the North Idaho Inn in Coeur d'Alene. Check out their Idaho chimney. Uh Uh-huh. Well, that's our show. Thank you so much for listening and have a great week. Yeah. And if you like what we do or if you just like us, uh, make sure that you like and subscribe so that we can keep making more content. Smoochie boochies.